Hi there, welcome to my Space Dodge Unity tutorial. Uh, we start off by creating a new project by File, New Project in Unity. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to build a player. Um, I'm going to build the player out of capsules in this case, although you could use a mesh of your choice if you want, or different primitives. Be sure to zero out the transforms and name the player, Player. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to rotate them a little bit, make it look a little bit more like a spaceship. Uh, duplicating the object, kind of scaling it to look like wings. Um, and then just parenting those wings under the player mesh itself, since we want this to move as one object. I'm also going to grab the main camera. Um, you can see the preview in the bottom right there is called Camera Preview. Uh, you can use that to make sure that your, your game will actually show your player. And finally, a directional light, so we can have some sort of shading. Here I'm creating two new folders that we're going to store the assets for our scene in, and start by creating a new C-sharp script called Player Controller that will attach to the player. This script is going to do, uh, take care of controlling our player, listening for key presses, and then translating our character appropriately. Uh, inside the update loop, which gets called every frame, we're going to have a series of if statements checking for specific keys to be pressed. The syntax for it is input.getKey, as you can see in the video. In this case, I'm just copy-pasting to save time, changing to left, right, up, and down arrow. I'm also creating a variable uh, with a vector 3, you know, XYZ coordinate type, that's going to store the changes we make to the player's position temporarily while we're messing with it in the key presses. So as you can see at the top of update, I'm changing this new variable to be equal to the player position. And then at the bottom of the update loop, I'm changing it back to uh, saving it to the transform position. So inside these if statements, uh, it might take a minute for you to figure out which direction needs which coordinate to change, uh, x, x minus, x plus, y minus, y plus, etc. But each of these statements is going to manipulate the position of the ship relative to where it is. So in this case, I went ahead and found out the proper plus minus coordinates for everything. We're using time.delta time uh, as an additional parameter in our movement equation. What time.delta time does is instead of moving uh, five units left per frame, remember updates per frame, time.delta time will say move five units per second. So it's actually going to make the amount of movement smaller, but it's going to make it independent of the frame rate. So faster computers won't move the object faster, slower computers won't move the object slower. So just drag that script onto your player object. We can test it out right now. Moving the arrow keys around, you can see he is moving. Excellent. This speed variable can be made public uh, by typing public beforehand, and you'll see that it now is exposed in the inspector, and you can change it during runtime. In this case, it made the speed faster. One last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a rigid body to our player. We're not actually using this for physics uh, like gravity. We're going to disable all the constraints and uncheck use gravity. In this case, we're using it for collision detection, which we'll, we'll get into with this next shape, the obstacle. So these obstacles could be asteroids, they could be aliens. Um, it's really up to you however you want to flavor your game. But essentially, I'm just using a sphere here, creating a new obstacle, C-sharp script, and attaching that. What these are going to do is they're going to advance forward towards the player. And they're also going to see if the player has collided with them. Uh, if the player's collided with the obstacle, then that creates a game over scenario. So real simple, in the update loop, every frame it's going to translate forward. I use time.delta time again because I want it to be uh, per second, not per frame movement. And then I'm giving it a speed 
variable as well. Uh, in that case, you see that I just had it going the wrong way. Since it's moving the opposite direction, I actually need to be vector three dot back instead of forward. There we go. Making a new function here. Um, there's a lot of these functions built into Unity that aren't there by default. By default, we just get start and update. On collision enter is something that is called uh, not every frame like update, not when the game starts like start, but when something actually collides with this object. So in this case, I write a line saying uh, who dot game object dot name equals player, checking to see if the thing that it collided with was the player, and then it will create the the game over scenario. So in this case, uh, you can see at the bottom left there it says I hit you, confirming that it's properly detecting a player. Let's change this to something that looks a little bit more like game over. Um, in this case, I'm going to write a line of code that will reload the current level, kind of like an automatic restart. Later, we can replace this into, you know, the ship exploding or uh, a game over screen coming up. Of course, our scene needs to be saved in order to be reloaded, so I'm just going to file save as the scene, and let's try that out. Excellent, we got a reset. So at this point, I'd call our obstacle done. I'm going to drag it into the prefabs folder to create a prefab of it. Um, that we can safely delete it from our scene. It's saved in our project now instead of our hierarchy. I'm going to create a new cube now. This cube is going to be what I call a spawner. It's going to be responsible for creating these obstacles and throwing them at us. The game is obviously a lot more interesting if you have more than one obstacle coming at you. Uh, in this case, the spawner can take care of throwing many of them up at you. So I'm creating a spawn position, which we're gonna we're gonna edit into a a random location. I'm also creating a new function, a custom function called spawn. So spawn position is a vector three, which means it's an x y z coordinate. We're going to use this to determine where the new obstacles are going to appear. We don't want them always appearing at the same place. In this case, I'm using the random dot range function. Creates a random, um, picks a random number between two upper and lower ranges. In this case, I'm using collider dot bounds. Every object with a collider has bounds, basically um, the furthest in each x y z coordinate. So you can see here, I'm using the minimum x, the min maximum x, minimum y, maximum y, minimum z, maximum z. What this statement will do, spawn position will now be equal to some point within the cube, allowing us to resize the cube if we want it to be a bigger random range. Um, at the top, I create a new variable called obstacle. This is where we plug in that prefab we just made for the obstacle. Um, and finally, the line instantiate, which is actually going to bring the prefab into the game, into runtime. In that case, I'm using uh, obstacle for what we are instantiating spawn position for the new position that we're creating, and transform.rotation to just use the same rotation value as our cube. It's correcting a few errors here. I think I left a, a comma in, and I forgot to type new for vector 3. There we go, all clear. Now let's type test it out just by throwing spawn in the update loop. We're going to get a lot of obstacles, but let's see if it works. Uh, prefab's not connected. There you go, connected prefab. And chaos, but it's working. Good. Okay, now the last thing to do to finish the spawner is we need to Give it a timer. We need to control how often it spawns. Instead of spawning every time a frame is rendered, let's write a couple lines of code to say, you know, spawn every however many seconds. So I'm going to create two new variables. Uh, next spawn, which would be the, the time at which it's allowed to spawn again, and spawn rate, which is a number that we use to calculate the next time something should spawn. Uh, so a little if statement in the update loop here. If, if the current time is more than the time that the next spawn should happen, then spawn something. And then change what next spawn is. So it's the current time plus the spawn rate. So if it's, you know, 10 seconds in and we just spawn something, it says, okay, well, the next spawn should be one second from now. It should be at 11. 
and it doesn't run until it times 11 again. Uh, problem here, it looks like they are colliding with the spawner itself. Okay, that's an easy fix. We'll just change it to a is trigger box collider. There we go. And there you go. There's the basic game finished. Now we can start thinking about extras to add to it to make it more interesting.